Yellow, Ralph McIntyre with Astro Mount Links. Well, you guessed it. I'm here to do another video of my video series, Transiting Saturn in Pisces, Aspecting the Planets in the Zodiac. In this video series, we talk about the evolutionary intent of transiting Saturn, aspecting each planet in your birth chart. And we're up to Saturn aspecting Mercury. Try not to talk too fast, try not to use too many words, and try not to stutter too much. You know, with that posse, I can't help myself. All right, with all you, all right, for all you new people, it so helps me if you click that subscribe button. Also, in the description below, you're going to see a link to a webinar I am doing where I'm talking about Saturn transiting in Pisces in your birth chart. This webinar is limited to 10 people. It's a live webinar where I'm going to dive deep into Saturn and how it's affecting you and your birth chart. This is a great way to get a little mini, 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 Mini reading with me. Say that three times fast. All right, without any further ado, let's just get into it. So you find yourself as a soul incarnated into a body with the planet Saturn in Pisces, aspecting your Mercury. How divinely inspired are you? All right, well, we're going to talk a little Saturn. We're going to talk a little Pisces. We're going to talk a little Mercury. So the aspects we're talking about is the conjunction, which is Mercury and Pisces, the opposition, Mercury and Virgo, and the two squares, Mercury and Gemini and Mercury and Sagittarius. And so Mercury rules Gemini and it also rules Virgo. So those two are very powerful Mercury placements. Anytime a sign's in its own house or its own, or excuse me, anytime a planet's in its own house or in its own sign, it tends to be more powerful. So Mercury rules the third house, it rules Gemini and it rules Virgo. And so Mercury, what is Mercury? Well, fundamentally, Mercury is how your mind works, how you communicate, how you hear things, how you think about things. Now, communication, it's easy to think about writing. It's easy to think about talking. But that's really just kind of scratching the surface of what we mean by Mercury in communication. You know, I'm communicating with the tone of my voice with the excitement there's a psychic communication going on you know you can communicate with paintings with music there's a zillion different ways to communicate and it's not a one size fits all but with saturn aspecting your mercury wanting you to kind of look at how you're communicating what are you letting into your mind what are you thinking about you know, and if you have Saturn, or excuse me, Mercury in Pisces, it's important to look at where your natal ne Neptune is. I noticed that this Pisces energy and the Mercury energy, I'm having a hard time putting my words together for some reason. But so if I stumble too much, uh, please forgive me. I'll try to edit most of it out, but I don't always get it all. So Mercury in Pisces. Or anytime you have a Pisces transit, it's important to look at what you have in the 12th house and where your natal Neptune is. That's going to help you understand what this transit's really asking for you. And if you have Mercury in Pisces, it's really important to look at what you have in the third house and also what you have in the 12th house. And also because Neptune rules at Pisces to look at your Neptune. So Fundamentally, Mercury in Pisces is the divine voice, the divinely inspired voice. And with Saturn in Pisces, wanting you to kind of have good psychic protection, kind of keeping the outside world out, and the inside world in. Also with Saturn, it's important to have goals. And with a Pisces Mercury, you're going to be very almost heavenly or spacey or kind of thinking about all sorts of things. And so Saturn's going to help come in there and ground that a little bit. Now, obviously speaking, not everyone with Mercury and Pisces is going to be, you know, ungrounded, but 
a lot of times that's the case with the Mercury and Pisces. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It's like losing contact with all the earthly limits helps you speak the heavenly truth. Now, if that Saturn's opposing your Mercury and Virgo, it's speaking about because Virgo, Mercury and Virgo really wants discernment. And Saturn and Pisces is like wanting you to look at all the unseen, the hidden Piscean things that you're letting affect you. Virgos also can be an overly responsible sign. So if your mind is thinking that you're responsible for things that it's not, you're not going to be able to do what you're here to do. And so that Saturn and Pisces, my friend Saturn, is here to liberate that Mercury. And then the two squares, we go over the Gemini, Mercury and Gemini, quick, 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 kind of thinking about all sorts of things, open to all sorts of things, listening to all sorts of things, super curious about all sorts of things. And that's Saturn squaring it from Pisces. Wanting to kind of have good boundaries from the psychic perspective. It's like, are you scattered or are you just taking on too many people's psychic energy? Would be a good question to ask yourself. You know, are, are you focusing on things because of psychic energy or focusing on things because that's what you want to focus on? Are you feeling responsible for other people because you're too in tune to their inner needs? That's another thing that that Saturn is going to want you to use boundaries with. And then if your Mercury's in Sagittarius, another square to that Saturn, that's the philosopher's Mercury. But anytime you have something in Sagittarius, you're needing to let go of all the things you were told to believe to make room for what you're here to believe. And that Saturn squaring it from Pisces wants you to look at the spiritual realm. How permeable are you? Where do your thoughts come from? Where do you let other people's psychic energy affect you and manipulate you? In some levels, that Saturn is here to rescue you again. So, I've said this in many of my videos, I'm going to say it in this video. On my YouTube channel, there's a playlist and where I have many playlists. And one of the playlists I have is a meditation playlist. And there's a bunch of psychic clearing videos there. I highly, highly recommend it. Also, you might really enjoy watching all the videos in this series because as I talk about other planets, I also give you some kind of general Saturn, Pisces, aspecting planets in your birth chart information in each video. So I would highly recommend that. So let's get back to that Saturn, the evolutionary intent of Saturn and Pisces. Lighten up that Mercury from either a conjunction, that Pisces Mercury, or an opposition, the Virgo Mercury, or the squares, the Gemini Sagittarius. And I was thinking about this since I was a little remiss that I did not mention the need for focus or goals with Saturn. Saturn kind of wants you to, hey, I'm going to climb that mountain over there. And so where are your spiritual goals? What, should, what are you really here for? You know, I talk about this often about being a soul, having a human experience. You know, it's like, are you getting caught up in the human experiences? Are you setting some spiritual goals? You know, for me, it's like, on some levels, that's where I feel the most grounded. It's like if I'm connected with my, so to speak, otherworldly, my spiritual goals in life, the rest of my life works really well. And Saturn and Pisces wants you to kind of sit your butt on the cushion and get your mind quiet. Mercury is the mind. So it's like, are you letting that quick chatter of Mercury kind of run you around? Well, my friend Saturn is going to come and help you out with that. The more you can, so to speak, metaphorically sit on your meditation cushion and get your mind quiet, the better off you're going to be. All right. I think that's a good place to leave you. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a spectacular day.